you sort of come and sit down. Now, <laughs> thank you <laughs> for being here. Thank you. Um, now, as an adolescent, as a young adult, you have no idea how many times I listened to your music, uh, how many times I laughed with you, how many times I cried with you, how many times I tried to play along with you. D did you, are you ever overwhelmed by just how many people there are around the world for whom what came out of your head and your mouth and your guitar played such an extraordinary role in their lives? Um, I'm continuously surprised at how much, <clears throat> you know, my songs meant uh, to so many. And, uh, you know, because when I wrote them, I wrote them from a very, very personal point of view. I mean, I wasn't, you know, um, uh, I wasn't trying to impress anybody. I just wanted to write these songs. I wanted, I, I did want to communicate. Um, and many of the ideas that I wanted to communicate were, were to do with, you know, the sharing, um, uh, learning, understanding, peace, love. So many themes which, which make us human. So, I mean, it, it's just great to keep on meeting human beings. <laughs> but then, um, in 1978, I think it was, um, you announced that you were taking a hiatus, you know, you were abandoning your, your musical career, and you probably broke millions of hearts around the world, including mine. What, what, I can fix what, it. Why, why, why on earth would you do that? Right. <laughs> <coughs> okay, so if you'd have listened to my lyrics, <clears throat> you would have heard that I was on a path, and I was definitely looking, and if, if I was sincere at all about what I wrote, it meant that if I found something, I'd have to grab it. Otherwise, I'd be a hypocrite to myself and to others. And that would be a bad example. So I felt an incredible responsibility in some way to make sure that whatever I, you know, I believed uh, was continuous and that I could stand by it. And and, and that's my story, if you like. I, mm. I've stood by it since I'm, you know, became a Muslim. Well, it was, it was but, but clear. That's, that, that's a very complicated subject. <laughs> when, when you want to explain what does that mean, well, it means that I discovered something beyond the, uh, the facade of what we are taught, you know, to believe about others, particularly the Muslim world. And I had, you know, I had my misconceptions, so I had to break through that. Well, you had a near-death experience yeah. uh, a couple years before. Mm, uh, yeah, maybe actually only about six months before I received the Quran, which was a gift from my brother. Um, you nearly drowned. I nearly drowned. And there was the moment where, you know, it, like, life, you know, was going to disappear. I was losing control, had no power. And that's when I made my reconnection with God. And, you know, and I was brought up as a Catholic. I wasn't a Catholic, I was a Greek Orthodox, so I didn't do all, all the things. But anyway, um, you know, it was a strong religious upbringing I had. I went to church a lot. And did your new faith bring you the peace of mind that you were seeking? Absolutely. You've got to remember, this happened before the Iranian Revolution. Get that in context. Because if you don't understand that, you may not understand how, you know, how things got to be the way they are, because it became political. When I was reading, you know, the Quran, picking up these spiritual books, it was, it was there were there were these lovely bookshelves all with amazing, you know, subjects about life beyond the grave, and, and you know, and, and trying to get yourself right, finding out about uh, other, other, other um, ways of looking at this world, other than the, you know, the material, mm. than the moral, you know, and, and so therefore, um, when you look at it like that, I was a student of or religion. And I found that Islam, for me, brought together all the strands of religion that I could ever wish for. You know, when I say, can I say something? Mm. When I say, uh, hey, you know what, uh, do you think that Muslims worship the same God as Christians? Right? That's a question. That, th th this was the discussion we had right. earlier. <laughs> well, a question posed and it's to actually me by answered my father. In, it's, it's answered in the Quran. It says, say to the people of the book, meaning Christians, Jews, and those who have faith, um, that your God, and our God, is one God. I mean, what could be clearer? But then if you ask, 
your average, those who have been brought up on the media, you know, listening, watching what the headlines say, they would not imagine that that's what Muslims believe. Hmm. I mean, you've been a really... Thank you. You've been a really eloquent um, voice for this, uh, for an Islam that is based on compassion and, um, um, and love and um, um, fairness to people. Um, but you've also, you know, I mean, it's for, for anyone who who's takes seriously um, their scriptures and so forth, it's, sometimes it gets complicated, right? Yeah. I mean, you, you I, I kind of have to ask you this because I'll get killed afterwards for not asking it. You got involved in this spat, um, uh, gosh, a couple of decades ago about um, Salman Rushdie, yeah. and um, um, you were reported as having supporting the fatwa against him. I mean, do you, do you regret how that played out? I regret the question. Um, and that's the problem, is that I'm, you know, I'm a Muslim, so I'm a kind of, um, I'm out there as a figurehead, and then suddenly I get asked this question. Of course, it's a, it's a trap. The whole point here is, um, I couldn't, of course, deny that within scripture, and you, you only have to go to the part that you know that, mm. you know, and uh, that you'll find all, all the evidence for, for, for you know, blasphemy being a capital offense, etc. Um, but then when I came, when, when, when the press started to connect me to the fatwa, I, I immediately wrote, uh, disconnecting myself from the fatwa, because I didn't believe in the, in the fatwa that, that um, went beyond the process of law, the process of international law, and, 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 and the whole uh, purpose of courts and, and everything else you know, that, we, that we need for society to, to, to be balanced and, and to be safe. Hey. Mm. Uh, that wasn't printed. Nobody printed it. That wasn't my fault. Mm. And after September 11, you were, you were extremely eloquent in, in um, uh, expressing solidarity with people in New York and, and horror at what had happened. And, and I mean, to what extent is your coming back into music now um, done because you can't stand this, this division between how Islam is perceived in many parts of the West and what you yourself know it to be? Um, it's, it's, uh, it's, uh, it keeps me awake, um, thinking about it, and trying to find ways. Well, after 9-11, actually, um, it was the first time that I sang Peace Train again. After 20 years? After 20 years. Well, I mean, I yeah. probably sang it in the bath or whatever, but... Uh, <laughs> But you know, this was the moment where I did it publicly, uh, not naked, of course. Um, and there I was in, on VH1, and there was a Radio S City Hall, you know, there was a kind of a big uh, gig with Paul McCartney, David Bowie, and, mm -hmm. and, and, and I sang, and it was telecommunicated. And so it got me going again, it got me, because that's where I began, you know, that's, that's, my, that's my legacy. Mm -hmm. My legacy was not to be, you know, branded this or that, but actually I kept an open mind. So, so what would you say, Yusuf, to the, to the many people in the West who, you know, they, they're, they're fearful of terrorism and they look at most of the news reports that are out there and see them associated in some way with people claiming to be acting um, um, on behalf of Islam. Um, what would you say to them? I'd say, where are you getting your information from? We just heard from Christina uh, about truth, about the need for a code of conduct regard, you know, in, in the media, the necessary, the missing, that which is missing. And uh, I would say, where are you getting your information from? Because if it's the mainstream, uh, I'd like to tell you that in the, main, the mainstream is suffering from a serious strain of, you know, um, I would say, uh, uh, amnesia as far as uh, the truth is concerned. It would, it would concentrate on something and completely ignore the rest. Well then, it, you know, that's one thing. If you want, if you get your information from history books, you'll probably find that there's about a thousand years of missing history of civilization, with the Islamic civilization, what it contributed in the terms of science and of, you know, learning pro progress. So I'm saying that where you get your information from is probably the reason why you may get some kind of picture like that. But look at me. I've, I embraced Islam. I would not have continued with Islam if that meant terrorism. 
mm. if that's what it meant, for God's sake. So, I mean, that's what the majority of Muslims who are not in the, in the focus, unfortunately, uh, believe. Do you, can you picture any process by which millions of Muslims like yourself and millions of others in the West can somehow join forces, walk the streets together, I, I don't know, but, but stand for a way forward that shows that people of different faiths can, un can unite and can stand for the same things and against the same things. Can Abs that happen? Absolutely. I mean, it, it's, it should happen um, because faith is a very, very valuable thing. And, and, you know, and even if we don't all believe the same things, there is, there is this uniting factor which, which all religion teaches to do with mor morals. And uh, take away the morals, you know, and or take away religion. Um, I know some people will say, oh, religion's you know, brought all the problems, et cetera, et cetera. No, it's the misunderstanding of religion. Yeah, we have mass uh, ignorance on, on the part of Muslims as well. And mass ignorance on the part of non-Muslims you know, in judging Islam and their own faith. I mean, I just found out that you're a Pakistani. <laughs> I was born in Pakistan. I was. Did you know that? I'm proud of it. <laughs> so, um, yeah, yeah, I know. So, so therefore, you've seen, you've, seen, I mean, you've, you've obviously seen from, from another side. Uh, yeah, I mean, we were talking before about, you know, my father was a, a missionary um, in Pakistan in the 50s and then in Afghanistan. He went there to convert Muslims, to make them Christians. And over the years, became deep friends with many Muslims who he regarded as just deeply spiritual people. And he, a born again Christian, um, Bible-believing, nonetheless formed the view that, yes, they were worshipping the same God. And um, he, would have, he would have been honored to be here tonight and to, give, to embrace you. Um, so I, I, I do think that that, that that story is not properly told yeah. in, in the West. You know, the, the American Christian, many American Christian churches don't see their faith that way. And I, I, I do view that as a tragedy. Yeah, I, I, I think that's true. Um, Britain, you know, is going through many changes. It's got a multicultural society and it's kind of coping in a different way. Germany is coping in a different way. But if you look at the situation, there's a whole lot of mess in the Muslim world, which, which was left for some time to, to, to fester. And I think that, um, and the fact that some of the... Uh, Regime, you know, we're talking about leadership. I was listening to, you know, and when you don't have lead, and when they're not condemned, and when they're kind of, well, it's okay, we're getting oil from them, so it's all right. Um, you know, there's going to be a problem, and, and, you know, we can't close our eyes to that. You have um, a new album out this week, uh, The Happy Apple. Um, no, no, The Laughing Apple. The Laughing Apple. Did I call it? How you said could, the it, happy how could apple. it laugh if it wasn't happy? The Laughing Apple. <laughs> <laughs> um, it sounds um, it sounds very much like your earlier work. I think you're, you're, you're reunited with Alan Davis and uh, guitarist, yeah. and, um, Paul Smith. and and the songs are from the 60s and 70s, right? Many of them. That's right. Many, I went back into my little chest of you know songs and back to the six, because it's now the 50, 50th year, if you like, of of my uh, first big hit, and and so yeah. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. You can buy the record if you. So, um, and um, so therefore, I and then I started singing some of these songs again. And the the reason for that was because they have this kind of innocent, very simple, kind of like childlike, thick uh, outline and colorization, primary color. It, it, all the songs have that kind of feeling. And because kids are the future. That's, that's, I wanted to make a kid-friendly album. So, you know, there's a song on there called um, Mary and the Little Lamb. It's, it's a song which I wrote, which was never released. It was a demo. Um, and there's other songs uh, like The Laughing Apple, mm -hmm. you know, which again is, is uh, extremely optimistic. You know, it says, be out there, you know, smile, don't worry. You're not going to get picked. <laughs> if you do, that's it. It's, uh, you know... That's, can you do? So, um, well, I have to say that the voice held up amazingly well. I mean, you're, you know, 50 years later, you're, you're sounding I, as good as ever. Wish um, I could have sung today. I'm very, very sorry, Chris. <laughs> it's just it was difficult. Uh, well, it's actually... <laughs> to confirm. <laughs> <laughs>
That, that's, it is a tragedy, but it's been absolutely fascinating to hear you. What, what would be the one idea you would leave with each of us? Um, I think the idea would be that uh, be, be careful about exclusion because in the curriculum, and I've been involved in some, in some way with education, uh, when, you're, when you're creating the curriculum, we've got to start looking towards a globalized curriculum with a localized aspect. In other words, we should know a bit more about the other mm. to avoid the, the possible build-up of antagonization, et cetera, et cetera. So I would say, but because if you exclude and then people feel disconnected with the, with the society that they're living in, they don't feel as if they've contributed, you know, then it's going to be a problem. They're going to say, well, I don't belong anywhere. So the hell with it, you know, and they're going to do something crazy like, like we see. So I would say, um, 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 I would repeat a verse of the Quran here, actually. It says, uh, what's, why are we created differently? It says, we created you nations and tribes that you may know one another, not mm. despise one another. Mm. The best of you in God's sight is the most righteous. Full stop. That's beautiful. Yusuf, thank you so much for coming here for those extraordinary words of wisdom. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yusuf. Thank you. Thank you. That was, that was lovely.